Hi, hello, and welcome to our second uh, conference, Demystify Conference of the Day. Uh, it's on funding African animation. Thank you for everyone who is um, joining us live, and for those who will later, you know, watch this on replay. We appreciate you uh, looking at this, and I think there's going to be a lot of useful information in um, in this discussion. Uh, so I want to get started right away. Uh, first, my name is Nadira Shakur. I'm moderating this session. I'm the co-founder of Nollywood Week Film Festival. And we have a good panel lined up for you. Um, we can first introduce our first panelist, who is Roberta Anand. Hi. Hi, Nadira. How are you? I'm Roberta. So happy to be here. <laughs> might be can on you mute. Hear me? Oh. No. Can you hear me? No? Okay. Well. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Hi. Um, how how are you? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you. How are you? I'm I'm well as well. Thank you for taking the time. I know I know you're traveling. <laughs> it looks like you're already so so thank you for joining us on this panel. I think it's um an important discussion and we've seen a lot of interest uh in, in this topic. So we really appreciate you taking the time. Can you please just introduce yourself, where you're from, uh your what company or organization you're representing, and, and any other information you'd like to add? Yes. So my name is Roberta Annan. I'm from Ghana. I'm dialing in from Ghana. I'm actually on the road. So I stopped just to have this because this is a very important discussion and I really wanted to be part of it. I'm the managing partner and founder of Annan Capital Partners, which is a boutique investment and advisory company. So we have an advisory unit and an investment unit. And if you look at our portfolio, over 80% is dedicated to the creative economy in terms of the investments that we've made as a firm, because I have a very strong belief that the creative economy in Africa is a tool for sustainable development and inclusive growth of our continent. So I'm very much dedicated to, to this. I am very excited to be here, to be part of the conversation, and I'm really looking forward to learning more from the other, other panelists and sharing a bit of my um, experience with you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, thank you, Roberta. And we're excited for you to be here as well. Uh, we're gonna bring in the next uh, panelist. It should be Evan, Evan Marks. Hi, good morning. Hi, hi, Evan. Um, if you can, again, just the same as we had with Roberta, if you can give an introduction to who you are, what uh, company you represent, and, and any other information you would like to add before we get started. Great stuff. I'm Evan Marks. I am the fund manager for Africa for the Right Project. Uh, our parent company is PSP Media Capital, a stateside in Los Angeles. And we have launched a funding initiative in Africa based on an output deal that we've secured with Netflix um, to provide uh, uh, filmmakers with an opportunity to bring their projects to fruition. Uh, we've launched our first cycle of application last year already. We've got some fantastic projects. Uh, uh, that we've um, uh, approved and funded already. And we're currently in the middle of our second cycle of application. Okay, great. Yeah, we've, we've been hearing a lot of talk about the right projects. I know that there's going to be also maybe a lot of questions about that as well, because um, it seems like an interesting new initiative. And before I, I bring in um, the animators, I do, I do want the rest of our panel, we do have the animators that are in selection here and who have done some interesting work. Before we bring them in, I, I do kind of want to speak with um, both of you all individually. Um, first, R Roberta, in terms of with what your organization does and, and help supporting the creative industry, I, I, I want to know, one, have, have either of you all actually um, supported animation yet? Have you, have you been able to fund any animation projects? Yeah, so my focus um, has, there's a little bit of a background noise. I don't know where it's coming from. Is it just me? I'm hearing this big boom. Okay. Anyway, if you can hear me, then I'll just carry on. So my, my investment has been mainly in fashion um, um, through the foundation, African Fashion Foundation, which has deployed 1.4 million USD to date um, into um, not just um, I would say into brands. We haven't invested into brands, but we've invested into friendships, educational opportunities, and social impact projects that 
different fashion designers on the continent are are, are doing. Um, we also have an expo to film. I'm actually getting into film um, now with my first ever investment coming out. Uh, and I'm very excited about animation because I feel that, you know, for Africa to be able to plug into the, um, the entire creative industry and actually to capitalize, because there's all, I want to touch on something which for me as a, you know, invest in the space and then also trying to um, get different investors to, to look at creativity. They don't see opportunity to scale. They don't see the economies of scale. And I think animation and film is an avenue for scale because you can reach new markets, um, you know, using digitized platforms. So I'm very interested to learn more about animation and to see what opportunities are out there. I've seen what's happening in this space with Lupita, you know, um, and, you know, the, the recent developments. I feel like animation is becoming um, more and more popular and especially looking at areas to make it more diverse and inclusive. And just to say, my son says he wants to be an animator. He's 10 and he makes his own animations on scratch. So that even propels me to even look more in, into this seriously in terms of mobilizing the right resources to help, you know, um, the young, talented people, the creative people that we have on the continent. Thank you. Yes, and 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 there's a lot in that that I, I'm not going to unpack it now. I'm gonna I'm gonna I want to bring the animators in in terms of that, but it's a, it's a lot of exciting information, and I'm I'm glad that you are looking into animation. Um, I know a lot of the animators are kind of maybe cheering right now. Happy to hear that. Um, and and I just want to quickly get to Evan with the right project in terms in terms of that because I I know when um, that you all have not yet funded any animation projects, but the thing that I find interesting is that you all are completely in the film space and you will um, give amounts in terms of the funding that is what the filmmaker needs, which a lot of times, as a lot of African filmmakers can attest, is that a lot of times when they ask for an amount, they're usually given a fourth of that and they've become creative with making it work. And the thing with animation is that sometimes you can't make it work because you need, there's certain restraints you have in terms of um, materials and, and these kind of supplies. But is, is, is the right project open to animation and to receiving animation proposals? And if so, what are you all, what would you all look for in terms of a good animation project that you would be interested in funding? Well, animation is a complex industry when it comes to this, uh, a cinematic point of view. Um, when we opened up our first cycle, we did not open it to animations because we were not sure what, what is out there in the market. I think first and foremost is getting your script rights. Um, this, this is the principal factor that needs to be focused on is getting your script right. And then the technical skill about executing that from a production point of view, it's not the same as um, live action. Uh, it's completely different. It all depends on the way you treat it. Um, I'm a novice as far as animation is concerned. I am not really a, an expert in that field, but we are definitely open to animation. We, especially from a development point of view, uh, for example, if there is a good short animate, uh, animation art that can be adapted into a feature film, it's something that we will definitely look at and will definitely fund. Great. I'm just, something else that I'm sure the animators are getting really excited about because so far there are a lot of shorts that have been put out waiting to get that funding or find that funding that they can, you know, create their vision of the future animation that they would like. Um, and I would, I think this is a good time maybe for us to bring in the rest of um, our panel, which are the animators, and I'll let them speak for themselves about their experience, what they uh, have, and all of their things are available in the festival to look at afterwards. So which will um, be playing right right after this session. So it it, it is good to um, see it. So we will have, we'll have everybody uh, come in. Hi, Nisi. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, if you can, if you can do the same as I just asked with everybody else, give a, uh, your, your name, where you are and what film you have in the, in the festival and you can add um, other information, you know, that you would like to add to that as well. Okay. Well, my name is Nisi Ogulu. Um, I founded an animation company called Creole Animation Studios. 
I'm currently in the UK, but we're based out of Nigeria, um, primarily and the UK secondarily. The short film we have out now, it was our debut 3D animated film titled The Satchel, which really focuses on the genesis of creation using Yoruba mythology. Um, and any other any other aspects you want me to expand on, I'm happy to. Okay, that's good for now. We're going to bring in the next uh, animator, Nildo. Hello all, nice to meet you. Hello. Um, Hi, if you can do the same, your name and the animation that you have, and maybe just a short, brief uh, point before we get into a full discussion with the others. Yeah, sure. So, hi, uh, my name is Nildo. I'm an architect, uh, but I do mostly animation. I've uh, I've uh, completed my architect architectural course back in 2002, uh, but even before I finished the, the, the course, I, I started dabbling with the 3D software up until 20, 2004 that I opened my own animation studio. Uh, I'm based in Mozambique, Maputo. And uh, well, we have been working mostly with uh, commercials for local television. But recently, we started doing our own in-house project called the Troublemakers, or Uspestinhas, which is actually one of the shorts that's being shown here on Nolly Week. Nollywood Week, sorry, is 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 from us, and uh, uh, yeah, this this would be our second short under this under this project, and we already have a feature film planned that we hope that hopefully we would start uh, pr production this year. So, okay, great. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank, thank. Do you know though? And, and oh, I have some feedback. And we are going to bring in Kwame. Hi, Kwame. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Um, my name is Kwame, and um, I work with an animation studio uh, called Apes in Space uh, here in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, and we have a film in the festival uh, called The Legend of Luanda Magere, which is uh, based on a Kenyan folktale. Luanda Magere was a, a kind of, uh, well, say a, a Kenyan superhero of sorts. Uh, so our film is about that. Um, we focus um, on creating original uh, African content, Kenyan content. Of course, we also do uh, client and service work as well. You kind of have to be a jack of all trades, a master of some, hopefully. Uh, in Africa, and I'm um, happy to be here and looking forward to this very critical and interesting topic about funding for animation. Okay, great. So now that we, we have all uh, made acquaintances, let me just add in one more. I hope we have space. <laughs> uh, we're going to bring in Addy BC. And Hello, I'm Addy BC. Hi, Addy BC. Now, before Addy BC speaks, I, want, I wanted to mention that he he is in a unique position here because he actually has a feature film in the festival. Um, and so that is, is quite exciting and it's exciting for us. It's the first time that we can also show um, a full, full length animation in the festival. We have in the past had um, shorts. So I'll let you introduce yourself and your film and a little bit before we, we get into it. I'm Adelisi Aletayo. I'm the co-founder of Territory Animation Studios and also the director for Lady Burkett and the Party Monsters, the first uh, feature film in Nigeria, the first feature-length movie in Nigeria. So this is actually my 21st year in the CG industry, and it's been a long time coming, so it's good to be part of the team here. Okay, great. So I... I, I want this to be really a discussion between um, animators and financiers because I feel like these are two groups that, in a way, <laughs> don't really get to interact. And I think the feedback that can be had on both sides can be very um, beneficial uh, for, for everyone and even for the people who are, who are watching now and have questions about this. Um, so I, I want to start in terms of, um, I mean, there's no kind of nice or discreet way to put this, but in terms of amounts, in terms of funding, um, if you all can give me like an idea in terms of the process of animation, because a lot of us might not know what, what it entails. What is the process of animation in terms of where are your biggest costs 
where do you find maybe the most difficulty in terms of where you're living? Um, because I have also heard like a lot of animators might have to go to the UK or other places to finish off some of these aspects. So if you can kind of talk in terms of that so we can understand why animation projects carry such a, um, a heavy cost, like their budgets will appear to be much bigger. And if you can have your mic off and you're not speaking, to avoid any background noise, um, that, would, that would be great. So I, I, I guess I could put this question first um, to Nisi. As you're as you're <laughs> in the UK, are you there because of because of funding or to develop the film? Can you kind of speak to what you find as maybe the most challenging or the most heavy cost? Sorry, I missed the last part of what you said. Yeah, if you could just talk in terms of in terms of you can use the example of the satchel. How was that process for you in terms of finding animate uh, funding to right. to create? And what did you find to be your your biggest hurdle or your biggest cost funding wise, just so we can understand what goes into the budgets of animation. Okay, because primarily operations will run out of Nigeria. So this will be speaking from the Nigerian perspective. Um, on the Sacho specifically, I found that the one of the biggest challenges we had really was coordinating just from an infrastructural point of view, court facilitating power and ensuring that the members of staff at everything from an electricity point of view to carry out the work. So that's infrastructure. And then you go into the point of skill sets and in wanting to deliver industry standard content, you're going to have to push the boundaries in terms of what they know and what they can understand in how to manipulate tools and the tools that they need. So training is also a massive part that needs to be impacted upon, especially um, out of Africa, because we don't have that as a standard course that is encouraged for people to take. So in terms of tutoring, that was another big expense that came in. Now you go into all of that and you know you're, that's, that's the bulk of way production work is going into besides your expenses or salary and etc. So when you're when you're looking at that and then you go into marketing when you're distribution. So marketing is always a heavy cost as well. But in, in Nigeria I found that the bulk of the work will go in the production level getting your team up to scratch with what your outputs um, are set to be. And our targets are always to deliver top quality at the end of the day. Okay, so I, I that's actually a very interesting point that you added there in terms of one infrastructure is truly, you know, you know, for animation and I mean, any kind of production, but as especially animation, you need those, you need electricity to work, bottom line. So, I mean, that is true. And then in terms of the training, as you said, um, yeah, that if that's extra work and time and cost of the extra, extra kind of training you have to give, um, that's, it's really an interesting point. Uh, does anyone else want to add, add to that? Do you have a different, like um, Nildo, for example, in Mozambique, you're in a different region, a different subset. Do you have a different experience with that? Where do you find your heaviest um, cost coming from? Uh. Mostly to do with, how should I explain this? You know, here we don't have an animation industry per se. So it's very hard to, 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 to find uh, people to work with locally. So whenever we have some uh, huge projects, we, we tend to always look, look for help outside. And, but this alone, but this is also, kind of a chicken and, and an egg thing because the rates outside it's 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 not something that we can we uh, we can really support so most of the time we end up uh, I don't know tr try and, and manage ourselves and we end up like Kwame said uh, being like a jack of all trades um, uh, the the most uh, recent example would be this short movie that we that uh, we just did uh, that's in the Nollywood Week Festival. Uh, this whole thing was done by two by by two artists, uh, one of them being me. And in terms of budget, uh, looking for budget here is here 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 is practically impossible because we don't really have like a government agency that really supports these types of, of projects. 
No? And we, we end up really just doing like TV commercials and PSAs and take something like 60 to 70% of that budget to do our own projects, which is not really sustainable, you know, because well, obviously we, uh, we all have other issues uh, that we need to take care of. So yeah, it's hard for us. I don't know okay. if that helps. Yeah, no, it does because I mean, it's a point that actually, um, yeah, what I've noticed it was touched upon a couple of times is this idea of being a jack of all trades. And it's, it's something that we see, you know, if you speak to an animator um, in France, in the US, you know, mainly in the West, that that is their profession um, yeah. to be a creative animator. I mean, there's all types of animators, but if, you, if they're looking, if they're working in the creative industry to make films, that's their profession. And we find a lot of times with, when you speak with a lot of um, African animators, it's kind of their side passion and to fund and to fund it, it seems like with what you were saying, you said 60, 60 to 70% of what you kind of make from doing these other projects and animation, mainly I guess ads and publicities and you being an architect, that that is what you use to then fund your passion projects. Um, so it's, it's different. Would, I'm curious in terms of, of the financing part, um, you know, you mentioned that there's that private financing, but um, well, first I'm going to go to Adi. First, I, if, if um, Kwame or Adibisa first, can you all let me know in terms of your funding, especially Adibisa who did a feature film. Where did you get your, your funding from? Uh, how was that funded? Well, it was all um, actually contracted to pay things up. So it came out of the funding. Uh, we were going back to the city of France, the main game of the Sorry, sorry, we, sorry, Adibisa, uh, uh, we can't, we actually cannot hear you. It sounds like your connection might not be good or either your mic, I'm not sure which one, if you can adjust it. Let me know. Oh, much better. <laughs> Great. Can you hear me now? Yes, it's, it's, what about it's now? excellent. Now. Yes, it's perfect. Okay, good. Yes, I said for, for Lady Bird. Good. Well, Lady Bucket, we actually contracted to produce it. We were commissioned to produce it. So it, came, it actually comes along with its own, uh, with the budget for execution. So it was a lot, uh, a lot easier. But uh, previous to that, uh, in other cases where we had to produce uh, short films, the funding had always come from, like uh, one of our colleagues said, it has always come from commercials, uh, savings that you've actually, over commercials over uh, a long period of time, it's actually been invested into creating of the short terms that we've done before we actually put this Lady Bucket. So it's very, very right on point. Mm -hmm. um, you said that Lady Bucket was, uh, you were commissioned to do that. In terms of being commissioned to do it, are you were you commissioned by, and I'll be surprised if the answer is yes, but a government agency in Nigeria or were you commissioned by a private individual? Uh, it was actually by a, a company, All Tickets. Um, it's actually by a private entity, private institute that actually uh, commissioned that to be produced. And are you able at all to give us an idea of the budget that you had to use in terms of yep. that, if you can? It's about the budget for the entire, as an 80 minute animated content and the budget's about $1 million in round figures. That includes the animation, the voice casting and the software licensing and everything that comes along with it. So, uh, and also with all the post-production um, involved in finishing the movie. So that's actually, uh, it's all, a million dollars actually, a million dollars was the precise uh, amount that was actually spent on Lady Bucket. Okay, so that, I mean, that is, that is actually quite interesting then in, ter in terms of that, and I'm sure these other, <laughs> the other animators are like, <laughs> got it like jaw dropping when they're, when they're hearing that. Um, and it's interesting if, if private individuals are getting into, into that. And um, in terms of the returns, before I cut away to Evan, because I want, I want his take on it as, as, as a financer, but in terms of the returns, was the company happy in terms of their returns that they received from it? Did it, did it meet the market? Is the market ready? Was it, were they ready for that type of um, film? Presently, it's actually still showing in other, uh, 
on other platforms. So currently it's out of the cinemas in Nigeria, but I believe it's still showing in other platforms like New Zealand, it's still very much in New Zealand, and uh, I believe it's still going to be showing on Netflix very soon. So, and uh, it's already on Trace TV in France. So it's still actually taking its toll on, on all that country. So it's still going to take some time before we can actually, because uh, when it was released in cinemas, it was released only in Nigeria in cinemas. And that was actually close to the uh, December 2020. That was COVID was still very much present and most cinemas were actually not active at that particular time. So it's only actually showed in Nigerian cinemas. But now that the country, is, uh, the world is opening up to, to, to the cinemas, it's going to be actually showing in more in more countries from now on. Oh, okay. So that's... I can't specify, yes, I can't specify exactly what has been recuperated from just showing in Nigeria. I know it actually ran for what, nine weeks in Nigeria, but mm -hmm. with time, I believe uh, they'll be able to recuperate even more than that was actually invested into. Okay, well, I mean, nine weeks is, is, is still something as um, there's a lot of films that don't make it past that two week mark. And you're in New Zealand, you're about to be on Netflix. So this is very encouraging. So this is where I'm going to turn it over to Evan because we see that there is a um, return in animations and that there is a market for it. I just, I want to ask you, Evan, if you can talk more, because I touched on this earlier and I just want to mention Roberta, she was on a plane and had to fly. So she apologized, her connection kind of went off and then um, she, she had to continue with her travel. So she did apologize, but I think she'll probably continue the conversation, you know, offline later. Um, but Evan, if you can kind of um, just let us know what what do you look for? If, if someone was to give you a proposal about an animation project, one, how should that proposal, one, be tailored to receive the kind of funding that they need? And what would you look for to determine if this could possibly have return on investment or be interesting? Well, return on investment. Return on investment is extremely important for us. So. Um, with every project, it goes through a review board, uh, through an expert committee, and then our supervisory board. Having a look at the project, first of all, having a look at the script, is the script good enough? Um, does it have a global appeal? And can we sell the property if it's produced? Um, the second thing is looking at the capability of the producers or the production team or the director, looking at their background and, and are they capable of executing a project, a project of international standard? Um, the third thing that we look at is, is can we sell it? That is extremely important. A lot of people sit with properties and it sits on the shelf and they can't seem to get that distributed or they can't make a return on the investment. Um, for us, it's extremely important that we can sell the property. Either we take it to Netflix, we take it to Amazon Prime. Um, there seems to be a, a massive demand for animation content uh, on, on all streaming platforms. And, and Netflix is, is comp especially that we have Apple do output deal with is especially competing extremely hard for animated content. Um, I suppose Disney still has the market overall, you know, uh, along with other studios uh, and, and kind of control that market to a certain extent. But um, if you've seen what, what Netflix has done recently uh, from, from, uh, from a distribution point of view, uh, it's brought up very very niche, independent kind of animated films that is not something in line with Pixar or Disney or Universal, etc. Um, uh, I was interesting to hear that budget of a of million dollars to complete that, and, and that is absolutely well done. Uh, fantastic to complete an animation on that. Um, um, I've recently spoken to uh, animated producer in South Africa uh, who did um, Kumba and Zambezia. Um, and those, those productions were quite costly, really quite costly, especially when you bring in international voice costs for that as well. Um, but our funding range kind of fits into that kind of mold for a micro budget uh, animation. Um, speaking about a million dollars, uh, we're more than willing to fork out anything from 1.5 to $3 million on an animation. Um, if the production is of such high quality and the script is of such, such high quality, that, that it requires more, it's definitely something that we can look at. So what would you, what would you say for, you know, would be, because I, I, I've seen um, in the past, like for short films, you all kind of give a range of different amounts of kind of like what you will see as being reasonable in terms of, of a budget. What do you see exactly for, I, I don't know if you said it, but I didn't really hear it at the end. What would you say would be a, a reasonable kind of range that you would see 
for a feature animation for it to in order for it to get returns or to be interesting in terms of investment. I'm sorry, just repeat that question. Yeah, I was asking in terms. I've I've seen that you all usually have kind of a range amount that you are a, that you all set for each kind of project: short films, for features, for documentaries. And I I was curious, would if you could just I know you you know you might not already have this in your head, but kind of throwing it out there since we did hear this one million um, dollar mark, what would you say would be kind of your range of something that might be interesting for you all as a project to uh, to finance as an animation? Well, quite frankly, I feel a million dollars is, I feel a million dollars is a really tight budget and congratulations uh, mm -hmm. for, for completing that project within a million dollars, uh, knowing that uh, what, what, what is expected from an animation and all the people involved in that. Um, our, our funding range actually starts at 1.5 million. We feel that anything below 1.5 million, uh, you compromise on quality. Um, not just in the production phase but we most most and not just from an animation point of view most most producers seem to under budget completely as far as post-production is concerned which is an essential part of completing your form um it's fine if you you want to spend all that cash and put it on the screen um, but you've got to complete a proper post-production with proper grading and proper sound mixing um, and, and all the elements that go to, goes part and parcel with the post-production. Um, from an animation point of view, I suppose it's treated completely different than a, a live action film. Um, rotoscoping and, and, and artists working on it, etc. I don't even really know how many artists actually works on a film. The one guy just said there was two artists working on his short film. Um, that's a massive amount of work that goes into to that. But um, We'll start at about 1.5 to about 3 million. It can go up. We've, we've, we, we, we have just funded a project that's just about four and a half million dollars, um, but that's a live action feature. And if it's justified um, and motivated why the production value is that high, then it's definitely something we can look at. Okay. Um, so I think that's very interesting. And, and I wanted to see you all, um, we have a lot of animators that are tuning into this, so I think you will be receiving many proposals for your next. Just from a short film point of view, uh, um, we haven't had any proposals as far as short film is concerned. So our range usually for a short film is anything between thirty thousand to sixty thousand um, dollars. So I don't really know what usually what it costs to produce a short film or anything between. 12 to 25 minutes um and, and that's that's all going to come from the filmmaker itself and they motivate their their production and and their budget uh, as to what it's actually going to cost to produce this okay well i i, I want to then actually bring that to kwame because uh, kwame you have a lot of experience in in this field and and with your latest short um and he just gave us like that that range what for you what do you find as being kind of your most um if you have any challenges, but you're most challenging in terms of being in this world of animation, in terms of the funding and and about like, if you can also give us a, a um, maybe an estimate of like what you spent on your um, last uh, short break. Thank you. Um, up here in uh, East Africa, uh, most of uh, the successful funding uh, we've received has been through uh, donors, but also it has been through private clients. Uh, some films that we've done have just been for, like one was a private NGO, the film that actually did uh, quite well. The other one, the, the one McGarry one, the one that's in the, in the uh, festival now, we got a, we got a grant from a donor. So um, there's been quite a lot of that in this area for shorts, uh, not so much for feature animations, but for shorts. So we've been, uh, you know, quite, uh, you know, you know, appreciative of that because that at least gives a kind of a stepping stone to towards making a feature or a series something that would be now financially uh, viable. Um, and when you're talking about ROI, um, so like for this last feature we did, we got by. It was about twenty thousand dollars for uh, not 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 feature uh, short for Luanda. It was about twenty thousand uh, US to put that together. Um, so when I hear Evans um, budgeting for short films, that's it's quite interesting to hear because it's. Uh, somehow resonating uh, a bit with what we're doing over here. Um, so yeah, we're trying to work towards a uh, feature or a series, things that will be sustainable and uh, ROI. And I think 
uh, this kind of seed funding is, is Um, I think we lost connection. Or is it? Uh, so I think we lost connection with uh, Kwame. But is um, but we'll continue in terms of what because what he was saying was that his um, short is at twenty was twenty thousand uh, for that one, and I I want to bring this back to um, Nisi and, uh, and just and just kind of go around with all of you all and ask. Um, your short film, did you all make a short because you wanted to make a short? Did you make a short kind of as a window into a feature that you all have planned? And if each of you all can talk on that, Anissi, we can start with you. Especially given that it's still very experimental, but now it's a bit more clear that the African space is looking forward to more animated content as well as the rest of the world sourcing for more original, authentic, um, culturally deep stories from from our pot, as I would call it. Um, but yeah, definitely the, the motivation for this first short film was to get market appraisal and of course, look out for people who would be interested um, from a production partnership point of view, investors, etc., into bringing our other projects to life, as well as potentially expanding upon the one that we've released with the Satchel. Okay, great. So you have you have your whole kind of uh, slate ready ready Definitely. to go. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, and and uh, Nilda, we can go to you in terms in in terms of um, you as well. You mentioned earlier that you your short is. To be made into a feature, so is kind of more of of an of an example. So, would you be interested in? Um, uh, I mean, well, first I want to ask you, how long have you had this idea and have been working on this project? <laughs> so back in late twenty ten. But because of funding issues, we weren't able to 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 start like in full force at at the time. And as I explained earlier, um, our our funds come from our outside jobs. Um, but it was, I think it was yes, it was 2013 when I finished my first short, that was actually. Uh, uh, featured in the uh, Africa Movie Academy, Academy Awards, that ran that ran that ran alongside Kumba, although Kumba was a feature film and mine was a short film. Uh, uh, at that time, we have or we had already started dabbling about the idea of making a feature film. Uh, well, the we pretty much we pretty much sort of benched the project uh, for a while. Up until uh, 2015, 2016, when we started working on the feature film script again, and it was on uh, 2017 that uh, a good friend of mine suggested me that I started looking for funds outside, uh, and that was my first uh, international event with Discop uh, Johannesburg. I took the 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 trailer. Well, we we decided to to make a trailer for the for the feature film so that we could. Show our show off our skills, and uh, so so that we could prove that we can do it. And it was very well received. Uh, we actually had a very good meeting with the Trigger Fish Stuart Forrest, and he uh, he helped us a lot, uh, and still is to a certain degree. And uh, it was at that time also that uh, that someone told me about Annecy Animation Festival. And uh, the in 2018, 2018 and 2019, I attended the NSC Film Festival. Um, we decided to do the short to also show to people that it's possible for for this project to also be considered as a series. So the short was more like a proof of concept for of that. And uh, um, but yeah, as a I wouldn't say like a side project, but 
as an alternative, sorry, my English is not very good on these things. Uh, we we are we are still very much working on the on the feature film. Uh, we really believe that we have the script uh, mostly ready to produce, and it's going to be based on the same characters. So over these past years, we have been uh, uh, really active in updating the characters, creating the sets, and now we are we feel that we are in the position to start doing some actual production work. So yeah. Okay. Well, so okay, so it's a, it's a it's a long time in the making and and I'm sure um, many can relate relate to that as well. And so it it kind of goes into my my next um, question and, and and kind of like, you know, the discussion where I want I want you all to kind of uh, everyone to kind of collaborate and think about this together. So what, what we're hearing is that as of now the the industry is not so sustainable. Um, it's it's every now and then there's projects, every now and then there's a short film that comes out as a proof of concept. Um, it's coming out of a lot of private funding when there is private funding. And how, like, what can we, what what do you all see as a way forward? What do you all see as, and I just kind of want each of you all to speak on this, what is a way forward to create more of a sustainable animation industry in Africa so it doesn't have to be a second or third job? Um, so that we can also have more people consuming it, and that we can have, you know, homemade productions and content going through the going through the um, the continent. And all of you all are, you know, are experts in your own right in, in this, and have been working in this for a long time. So I'm curious to hear everyone's take, and then we can end um, with Evan from his perspective in terms of because he's from a different um, side point. So we can start with um, with Kwame. Yeah, thank you very much. Um... Uh, I, one way I, I, I strongly feel that we can learn from is um, what we've seen in the Nigerian model in Nollywood. Nollywood week. I mean, I'm just so uh, in awe of how Nigerians have looked at it from uh, business-wise uh, in terms of live action, which I think can borrow a lot into animation. But you know, looking at looking at the looking at the market, looking at hey, we have we have hundreds of millions of consumers that want this product. How can we make it? How can we get that product to the people? And using private funds, not waiting for donors necessarily. I think out in East Africa, it is a bit of a, a crutch relying too much on donors. Um, I, I think there's just a lot to learn from the Nigerian business gusto on just like, hey, let's put our money where our mouth is. Um, let's take our private money. Let's make the film. Let's make it. Uh, let's look at the market. Let's make it uh, profitable in that sense and grow from there. So that's one way I think we could look at things. So, Yes, and, and I, I think that's a good point. A lot of us... Um, even even non animators are looking at the Nigerian model of how they've just gone with it and and, and developed. So definitely a good point. Um, uh, Nisi, what what do you see? I definitely agree with what um, Kwame has said there in terms of just putting your money where your mouth is. But at the end of the day, when you look at long term sustainability there needs to be a contribution of whatever it is the industry is doing to the GDP. So, and before you can get that, it needs to be a core part of your economic ecosystem. And that goes back even to education um, at the end of the day. So I think after you put your money where your mouth is and you get um, the desired recognition in parallel or straight after, we need to be looking at how to build a proper ecosystem to really build the industry. And that goes back, like I said, making it part of the curriculum and ensuring that it's a, it's a profession that can um, be sustainable. Because after, after you can see that there is a potential there for economic benefit, you have to be able to build and harness that to actually make it a sustainable um, industry. Okay, great. And at ABC, and, and especially, you know, you as, um, someone who has received private funding, which is kind of, you know, I think for a lot of animators, like kind of the dream position to be in, to be able to make that that uh, deal. One, I kind of have a two part question for you. First, is that your preferred um, method as an animator? Do you want to be commissioned to do work or do you have kind of your work that you rather have pre-sales on so that you can make what you want to make? Um, and two, what in if for you? You know, how do you see your way forward? Um, because you you have made a feature film and you are in the Nali, the Nollywood or the Nigerian space. Um, what is your take on everything? Uh, 
network. Uh, we, we, I, I think we are not able to hear you, if, if it's your connect. Uh, I think, okay, ADBC's connection is not stable, and I guess that just goes back to the infrastructure <laughs> conversation we were saying before. Um, <laughs> uh, there he is, great. Uh, can you hear us? Uh, do you, are you on mute? Uh, I, I think the connection is still not is still not there. While we wait to get that connection, since um, I'm I'm looking at the time, um, I do want I, I want to go now to to Evan, and I I want to give people practical next steps. You know, I don't like to just have panel discussions just so everyone can kind of talk and for I mean because you all are kind of in a position where I know you all have ambitions and projects where you all want to take it further. Um, but you all are also in a position where you do have something already developed. And I know that there's a lot of people who are starting out now in animation. They don't know what to do next um, as a next step. And hearing about Evan with the right project, I'm sure that they're interested in knowing concrete, even for those on the panel, concretely, what are the next steps? Can you tell us more about like how, how can these animations be, um, be developed? Gosh, from a development point of view, that is a quite a tricky question. Um, I'm going to come back to the most important point. You've got to start with a script first. You've got to have a script. You've got to have a story that you want to sell. Got to, most people use their short films, whether it's animation or a short film, as a proof of concept, hoping for something bigger, um, hoping that something bigger can come out of it. Let's go to a, 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 a filmmaker. And there's many of them that I can actually quote that uh, made Whiplash a couple of years ago, um, which was a phenomenal success as a short film and then eventually got adapted into a feature and ended up walking away with a couple of Oscars. Um, a lot of people is going in with that intention. We are doing exactly the same thing. We are looking at your short form as a proof of concept for something bigger, a full feature or perhaps adapted into a television series. There's got to be more to that. It cannot just be a once-off project uh, that because there's no return on investment and no value in that if it's just a once-off project. So there's got to be more to that that we, you, can, you need to expand on from a development point of view. So, yeah, if anybody's got stories out there, uh, even if it's just a, 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 a storyline, you don't even have, from a short film point of view, even if you do not have a full script yet and you just have a storyline or a synopsis, and you feel that is good enough to adapt into a script, we do have a development program from the short form point of view. Unfortunately, when it comes to features, we only look at completed scripts. Uh, the development time on a feature a film just takes too long. And unfortunately, we have turnaround times as far as output deals is concerned. But we are very actively involved in developing short films. So just a synopsis or, or a storyline would suffice. And, and, and if it's appealing, we get involved with development money to fully flesh out and develop a full script uh, for a short film, get that into production as well, and deliver to the market. Okay, well, great. So that, that's actually a very, it's very interesting what you just said, because I think you kind of left little nuggets for everybody in that. Um, if you're starting out from the basis and you don't have a short film yet and you might not have you know, as, as some of the um, panelists have said that they've worked off of private money that they've saved or or things from other jobs. If you, you don't have that, based on what Evan is saying, you just with uh, even like just the synopsis with the bare bones of that, that they can then at least join and, and develop that into a short film and have that part of, of that program. And then if you are at the next level, which is um, having a short film that's already been developed as your proof of concept, then those filmmakers are, and also if you have a script, you can then submit if you're looking to do a feature film, correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Fantastic, yeah. And, um, every, everybody's trying to use their, their, their short film as pretty much a resume, stepping stone for something bigger. There's gotta be something bigger. And I would like to use that as a bit of a, 
of a nice connection into, um, because you've mentioned several times about the script and starting with the script and the script needs to be on point and it needs to be good. And, and that's a good kind of um, connection into tomorrow. We will have a, a masterclass led by, by Evan who will be going over rules of um, script writing and how to, and how to develop your script and, and how to kind of get that, that script that can stand out and get investors interested. So if you are at that stage where you are looking to to make um, a feature film, that's definitely something to to join tomorrow. at 11:30 a.m. Paris time. So I, I definitely think that that would be um, a good next step as well. And and Evan, in terms of the right project, uh, because I, I like I said, I do want everyone to kind of have action points in terms of what they can go to. When is your next call for entry? Uh, we are currently open, still open, uh, during the second cycle. Our regular deadline is the 31st of May at midnight, and our extended deadline is the 30th of June. And uh, at this point in time, we do not have a set date for uh, a call of entries for our third cycle. Uh, we first want to see what we can get out of our, th this next reaping of, of applications uh, and what good comes out of it. We've had an overwhelming response on the first cycle and some fantastic projects that came out of there. Uh, two short films is currently already in production and we're very excited uh, as to, to the, the amount of talent that's coming, not just out of Africa, we even have storytellers coming out of Europe and India, some out of the US that wants to come and make these stories in Africa. Oh, so, so even because we do have people tuning in from around, so even people who are interested in doing maybe a co-production in Africa or um, making something here, they they are also able to apply for the the right project. Yeah, is that correct? yeah. Okay. Our requirement, our, our requirement is very very strict. And look, we we require from producers to at least do eighty percent of their production in Africa. We cannot give you three million dollars and you think you're going to spend it in the states or in Europe. It's about creating sustainability, creating opportunity here in Africa for filmmakers, you, making use of. A, a local crews, either Nigeria, South Africa, or Kenya, where the three huge markets are, um, and, and and develop this, bring international funding back to Africa. Okay, great. So I, I think that we we kind of have some clear next steps of of um, at least that this is one opportunity. Um, I'm sure if Roberta was still here, she would also you know she was also very interested, as she mentioned, in animation as well. Um, and, and with her organization, a non-capital non partners, which is based in Ghana. So it's, it's exciting to see this change because, you know, to have um, African-based players that are now looking into the, the animation film market and looking to fund it, um, because we, we, as we all know, you know, there's definitely lots of talent here and, and it's just a matter of, you know, getting those elements. And uh, as we are winding down i would like everyone to kind of say their last words i don't want anyone to leave feeling like that there might have been something that they wanted to say in this in this discussion um because not often that we get to to meet um especially such an array of people from around the continent so uh everyone you can please have your last your last wrap-up words i can start with eddie bc because he got cut off before and he wasn't able to to speak so eddie bc go ahead Okay, well, it's actually good that we're coming together to discuss on this uh, on matters like this. It actually helps to forge forward uh, and establish a sustainable development process across uh, the, the continent itself. And I believe with time, just within the short more time, uh, we will also be having other series of contents from series to full-blown episodes like Lady Burkett. Um, there's, there's more to be done. There's quite a lot to be done in terms of training human development capacity and also in... Uh, production practically in 3D animation, but I believe it's going to get better. We've taken our first good step forward and we can only keep doing better. Okay, great. And it, uh, let's go to um, Kwame if you wanted to say Final wrap up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks everyone for a very interesting conversation. It's very uh, interesting, inspiring to see uh, what's happening out there. Um, and I would just say to all the young animators out there, um, keep working on story because I firmly believe that the story is good. It will it will eventually find uh, production. So just keep at it. I know it's it's we're all an uphill task, but just keep at it and keep uh, keep steadfast. And we will create great things for our people and the world. Thank you. Great, uh, Neil Do. Uh, 
Yeah, well, uh, basically what Kwame said and what uh, Aridisi said also, uh, I really don't have anything else to add. Uh, I just find that, uh, that this uh, event, at least from my point of view, is a very good one because it helps me to also identify what else is out there and whom else I can speak to regarding our own in-house projects. Uh, it's very good to know that there are uh, companies or institutions like uh, The Right Project and Roberta Nunn's Capital Partners that are willing to at least hear us out and see if our projects are, I don't know, worthy of uh, support. So thank you. Thank you, Evan, for, for your very nice insight. Uh, it's been very, very interesting. Uh, I look forward to talking to you later on. And and uh, and you see if you if you have any final words that you wanted to say before you wrap up. I think the guys have have covered most of it. But yes, th thank you to all the panelists for coming on board. It's been very insightful. Um, and you know, to everyone out there, it's like like they said, let's focus on our story. Let's keep progressing and let's keep collaborating to really raise the industry. So thanks thanks to everyone who's been insightful and I look forward to more conversations like this. Okay, great. And, and uh, Evan, I'm gonna let you also um, wrap up and I'm just gonna put it out there again that we've heard it a lot of times, story is the basis. Um, it's something that we also really strongly feel at Nollywood Week. So please uh, tune in tomorrow uh, for Evan's uh, talk on screenwriting. Sometimes it also just helps, you know, hearing different things from different perspectives. Um, and Evan, if you wanted to say a few, a few less um, words about the the conversation or any point that you wanted to wrap wrap up with. Yeah, um, um, just from what most of the panelists are saying, story is key. Um, and whoever's developing a story, uh, for all those animators out there, not just animators but filmmakers, etc., and writers. Bounce your story off people. Get their ideas. Um, I do understand that that uh, the environment in Africa is slightly more sensitive than uh, um, in Europe and America. So, uh, just so, just make sure that who you pitch your content to. But bounce your ideas off people. See what's working. See what's not working. You've got to get some third party input into your ideas. Uh, you cannot just hold it close to your heart and 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 think you can nurture it all by yourself. We all need help. Yes, I think I think that's an excellent point um, in terms of collaborating and and, and working together and, and having that feedback. Um, it, it's something that can not only be applied in animation, but I think in terms of just any creative industry um, as well. But you know, even in in live action films, um, I, I I'm really happy with the the panel that came out today. I'm, I'm happy with the conversation that we were able to have. I hope it's been beneficial for you all as well as for the audience and everyone tuning in. I do want to let you all know, just because we're disconnecting here on the on the live panel, we do have a networking hub um, that is set up that the conversation can continue to go after we disconnect here. So if you want to keep the conversation going, connect to our networking hub and there you can, there's, a, there's even a table set up for animators. So you can go there, continue talking about animation and exchange contacts, network, that's the most important thing and, and because we're all looking, you know, to really create that sustainability in this industry and, and seeing it grow and having more productions come from our creatives within the continent. So thank you, everybody. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, as well, that's tuning in and that's listening or watching it on replay. And we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow then at the, at the screenwriting. And one more thing before we get off, following this session, there is a watch party for the shorts um, from the three short filmmakers that are here on the panel. And on Saturday morning, we will have um, a watch party for Lady Bucket and the Motley Monsters, which is uh, Addie BC's feature length film. So definitely tune in to see those. Definitely have, it, it will help give you more of a rounded perspective of what others are doing as well. So we look forward to you tuning into that. And we'll see you on the networking platform. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.